Good evening and welcome to our Bible study. We're in the book of John chapter 9 tonight, so if you want to follow along in your Bible, and we will be reading a lot because we're doing Bible study here, so we're probably going to do a lot of Bible reading and um, talking, especially from this chapter, about the things that we're going to deal with tonight, so be prepared to read. If you have your Bible, you can follow along or he will project it on the screen for you. And for all of you joining us online tonight, we do welcome you to the Bible study. And we're getting ready to pray, so I already told the folks here, as we pray together, if you have a prayer request, just throw yours in there also. And as Jesus said, when you pray, believe. When you pray, believe. Believe that, number one, that God is hearing your prayers, and number two, that God will answer you. Right? You say, well, I don't feel good enough for God to answer my prayer. Well, welcome to the club. None of us feel good enough. But we pray nevertheless, and uh, we want, and we have faith in God. That's where faith comes in, that God will hear and answer us. So let's look to God in prayer tonight as we open the Bible study. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful tonight for this Bible study. Thank you, God, for each and every one that is here in your house as we come together to worship you and to learn from your word. I ask tonight, God, that you'll bless the Bible study. We pray for your anointing and your unction as the teaching of the word of God is is uh, going forth, I pray that you will give us understanding, give us ears to hear, and a heart or a mind to understand the things in the Word of God. Tonight, Lord God, we lift up our prayers before you. Whatever prayer request is, is going up before you, Lord God, I ask tonight that you will show compassion upon us and, and hear and answer our prayer. Prayers of God, work on our behalf. Bless, accomplish your will. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Amen. And so we're in John chapter 9. John chapter 9. And this chapter deals with this, this man that was blind from birth. He was born blind and, and Jesus came his way. And Jesus opened his eyes. And then a big discussion began to take place between him and the Jews or the Pharisees. They began to question him, trying to find fault with the whole situation, trying to criticize Jesus for doing such a great miracles and, and stuff like that. But the thing what I want to uh, focus on tonight in this Bible study is this. This man had a story. He was born blind. And here we are, thousands of years later, we're talking about him. We're talking about his life. We're talking about how Jesus healed him. And so tonight's Bible study is, God can use your story also. God can use your story also and never look down at your life. A lot of times, as, as we shared the scripture before, the Bible said, all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. And we do not understand everything we will have to go through in life, even from this point on all the way to the end. We do not understand it, but and, and we do not understand everything that happened to our, us as we were growing up. Maybe some of us went through difficult times, challenging times, um, hardship. Uh, some people go through things that are not even worthy of me. Or, uh, it's not even good enough for me, or not good enough, or pleasant enough for me to talk about. But people go through all kind of things in their life as they're growing up as a child and, and different things they may suffer, different things you have to deal with, and certain things that you yourself may not want to broadcast or tell anybody about, which is fine, but remember that it's your story. It's your story, it's your life, and God can use it for His glory. God can use it for His glory. God can use you and everything that you have endured to this point in your life, or will continue to endure in life. God can use you and use that story to help other people, as he did for this blind man. And so we'll begin the Bible reading in John chapter 9. We'll read the first 12 verses, and then we'll go back and talk about it and some of the things that is contained here. Verse 1, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind. Jesus answered, Neither had this man sinned nor his parents, 
but that the works of God should be manifest in him. And that's where I'm taking this from about God can use your story. That verse right there. In verse 4 he said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam. I guess that's how you pronounce that, Siloam, which is, by, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. <laughs> but he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes, and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. And so that set the background for the story. Here was this man that was born blind, and uh, later on we found out that, uh, that he, was, he wasn't you know, a teenager, he was an older man. If, we'll get to it eventually, I think he was in his 30s at that time when Jesus healed him. So he had been in this condition for a long time, blind, and no doubt wondering to himself, you know, why was I born in this condition? Maybe he had siblings, maybe he had cousins. Maybe there are neighbor, neighboring kids that were out playing and running around and having a good time doing things that, uh, that kids usually do. But he was limited. He was uh, hindered by his situation. And maybe for years he questioned, God, why? Why are you allow me to go through this? Why are you allow me to face this situation? Why couldn't I have been like other kids that grew up as a normal person? And maybe he, he didn't quite understand his life, but we find here that Jesus had a purpose for this man. Right? Jesus had a purpose. God took his story and uh, immortalized it in his word that will be preached for generation to generation. God saw something in this situation. And so, like I said, a lot of times we don't always understand God why. Why do I have to go through this? Or why did I have to face this situation? We may not always understand it, but remember all things. If you really love God and you're called by God to be his servant, the Bible said all things work together for good. Can I get a witness tonight? Amen. Amen. All things do work together. And so maybe he didn't understand. And so the question was presented to Jesus in verse 3. Jesus, or, or verse, verse 2, as a matter of fact, and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? That this man, who did sin? This man or his parents that he was born blind? So you see, they, they naturally assume that uh, it was this man's fault that he was born blind. Or maybe it was his parents' fault that he was born blind. The, the way people think, you know, something bad happened to you. Oh, you might have you really got in some trouble with God. That's not always the case, Right? We look at Job, the Bible said that he was a just man, perfect in all his generation. There was nobody like him. He was perfect, he feared God, he hated evil, but yet he went through a battle in his life that I do not wish upon anybody else. Everything, he lost everything. Ten children in one day. All his cattle, all his camel, all his wealth was taken away. Uh, his body, later on, his body was inflicted with sores and boils from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. And people may look at him, and even his friends that came to, to, to comfort him said, Job, you really sinned against the Lord. You really messed up. But that wasn't the case. That wasn't the case. And so a lot of times we look at the, the things that we may have to go through, and we ask God, God, why? Why do I have to do this? Well, the Bible story tonight is God has a purpose in everything. Amen. God has a purpose in everything. We may not see it right now, right now and right where we are in our life, but 
he does have a purpose. Because if you look at verse 3, Jesus answered their question. Jesus answered, he said, Neither had this man sinned, nor his parents. Right? The disciples thought it was him or his parents that did something wrong. But Jesus said, Neither this man nor his parents did anything wrong. He said, But that the works of God should be made manifest in him. He was born this way because God had a plan for him. He was born blind because God was going to use this man as an example to demonstrate his power in his life. God was going to use his story. Now, this happened 2,000 years ago. Here we are still talking about it. If God can heal this man that was blind, born blind, God can open his eyes. Can he not do something for us? That may not be as difficult as opening our eyes. Can God not help us in our life? If he can do something like this for a man that was born this way, can he not do the same thing for us? Are we any different than this man? Are we any different than his situation? Yes, he was born blind, but we were born spiritually blind. Sin had blinded us. We were born in darkness, and now we see, right? Now we can say, God, open my eyes, my spiritual eyes. I can see clearly what this world is all about. I can see clearly that uh, life is not eternal on this life and that I, I need to make preparation for the one to come. A lot of people go to their deathbed never understanding that. A lot of people go to their deathbed never understanding that we don't need to allow life to really beat us down every single day. I understand there are challenges and difficulties that come, but we are not the devil's whipping boy or whipping girl or whatever. We belong to God, right? We belong to God, and we, we have to realize that God needs to open our eyes to, to see that we are not just some, uh, forgive me to put it this way, we're not just some low life. We're not just some beggar on the side of the street, spiritually speaking here, Right? We are children of God. We've been created in the beauty of God, in the image of God. And especially if we were born again, we were saved. God has taken us out of the kingdom of darkness. He places us into the kingdom of his dear son. And he has a purpose for our life. And so the, the Bible study is God can use your story. Maybe there's some things that you went through in life that God can use to help other people. Have you ever went through something and, and you're, you're going through something and somebody came beside you and said, hey, I know what you're going through. I, I, I went through the same thing. And, and, and I know how you feel and, and understand if I made it through, you can make it also. Right? And they come beside you to encourage you because they went through what you're going through and they understand all the difficulty and the hardship and everything. And so they encourage you. And so you can do the same for somebody. You can do the same for someone else. You can come beside them and say, you know what? Uh, let me tell you what God did for me. I was dealing with this. This was a burden to me. I was weighed down. I was heavy laden. I was cast down, if you will. And I came to Jesus. I just brought my, my problems and I gave it to the Lord and asked God, God, help me with these things. And, and it, yes, it was a challenge. It was a battle to let it go. But once I let it go and I give it to God, God took that burden off of me, and he filled me with his peace, and, 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 and he gave me a, 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 an opportunity to continue to follow in the right direction. And now somebody else is being blessed by your testimony. Somebody else being blessed by your story. And that's what we find here. This man, he was, Jesus said he, in verse 3, he said, Neither had this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be manifest in him. God was going to use this man as an example to other people. Who knows how many other people were healed of blindness because of this man. Or maybe other people, the people that knew him that we read about, that said, isn't this he that sat, at the plate, sat outside and begged? You know, all those people, and they were asking, where is Jesus? Maybe they were motivated. They were like, okay, man, if God can heal this blind man, that we know that it was born blind. If God can heal him, maybe, maybe they got encouraged and said, maybe if I go to Jesus, maybe he can take away my, my little illness that I am facing. Maybe one of them had a broken arm. Said, maybe God can heal my arm. 
or maybe someone who had a, a kidney problem, or maybe a heart problem, or whatever. They had, maybe they're saying, if God can do this impossible thing, heal this man that was born blind, could he not do it for me also? And so I'm saying God can use your story, just like he did for this blind man. He used him for his glory. He opened his eyes, and this man became a testimony and a witness. As we read on, you will see he became a big testimony. He was a talker of the town. All the religious people came out on him, and he began to preach to them. He began to tell them, he said, he said, I don't know, you, you're finding fault with Jesus and all this stuff. He said, but let me tell you something. I don't care what you think about Jesus. This is one thing I know. I was blind, now I can see, right? I was blind, now I can see. And so he became a voice for God. He became a witness for God. He became an, an example that if God can do it for me, he can do it for you also. And so that's the, that's the, the message that I'm trying to convey here tonight. And, and I'm very sure I won't get very far into it for sake of time. But the thing is, we all have a story. We all came. We all have a past. I'm not glorifying that past. I'm not saying everything is, is you know, you know, whatever, it was, is, you know, God approve of everything, whatever. But I'm saying God can take it and God can use it. And here I'm going to read a story of another man who we all know, very familiar, if we're familiar with the Bible. And that is the Apostle Paul and how God took him and used his story for his glory also. Right? And um. 1 Timothy chapter 1, we'll read verse 12 through 16. And this is just a summary of what, what Paul was talking about. He said, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who had enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. And so Paul was writing to Timothy here, this young preacher, and he was using himself as an example. He said, you know my life before I became a Christian, how I persecuted the Christians, I hated the Christians, I imprisoned the Christians, I beat them. He said injurious, meaning he caused injury to them. And so we look at his life, how he was blaspheming God and doing all these evil to wipe out Christianity. And then one day on the road to Damascus to do more harm and hurt to Christians, Jesus met him. Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus, the great light that shone round about him, and he heard the voice of Christ saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It's hard for you to kick against the bricks. And when Saul realized that he was uh, really fighting against God, he didn't quite understand that that's what he was doing. But once Christ appeared to him and he understood that he was really fighting against God, he surrendered his life to the Lord and said, Lord, what would you have me to do? And Jesus told him to arise, go into Damascus. He said, and I will show you there. And we know the whole story. He sent Ananias the prophet to pray for him. He recovered his sight. And from that point on, God began to use him for the propagation of the gospel. And we know this man wrote many of, many of the books in the New Testament. And his life spe speaks to us even this very day. His devotion, his dedication, his commitment to God, his faithfulness, his love, his passion for, for the work of God and all these things, it speaks to us so much because he was a man that God took his story. He was an evil man in the sight of God because he was fighting and destroying God's people, fighting against God's people and destroying them. But God took him and God used him. Right? God turned it around. And so I'm talking about God can use your story also. And throughout the book of Acts, or not throughout the book of Acts, but different times in the book of Acts, 
Paul will refer back to this very time. When he will testify to people, he will tell them, look, I used to persecute Christians. I used to kill Christians. I used to imprison them. I used to beat them, but I obtained mercy. And so he's showing us here, in, in, in Timothy, he said, God showed it first in me. If God can take a man that was killing his followers and turn him around and use them so greatly, he said, what more can he not do for us who haven't really done that kind of evil, right? None of us has killed any Christians here before, right? Hope not. <laughs> None of us has beaten anyone and imprisoned any other Christian before. Well, if God can do that, can use Paul so greatly who was in such bad shape in the sight of God, what more can he not do for us? What more can he not do in us? All we have to do is give God a chance to work in our life. And so I'm talking about God can use your story for his glory. Maybe there are times in your life you question God. God, why? Why? And I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know. I'm teaching people online here, whatever, and maybe I'm, I'm, I can relate to somebody tonight. Maybe, but maybe someone, someone of us here may ask God, God, why? why? Why did you allow me to go through these things? Why did you allow my life to take such, such a path? Why do you allow me to have to deal with all these things? Other people didn't have to go through that. Well, they have a story of their own, right? We all have something we can testify of. I mean, I may not go through what you go through, and you may not go through what I go through. And so what I'm saying is we all have a story. We all have something that God, that we think and we misunderstood the situation with and, and didn't quite fully understand God's purpose and will in it. But the, the Bible study tonight is just like this blind man. He may, he may not have understood why he was born blind and why he had to go through life blind for so many years. But here, Jesus came. Jesus opened his eyes. Jesus gave him a chance to see. And now his life is written in the Word of God. His life is written in the Word of God for others to read and to be encouraged and to, and to, and to, to have faith in God that God can do it for them also. And so God can take your story and use it for his glory. And so we find in verse 6 and 7, he says that uh, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, speaking of Jesus. He said, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. And so we see here that if we will receive anything from God, a miracle. Now, God doesn't need our faith to do a miracle, right? But he uses our faith. I don't want to limit God this morning or tonight. Some people say God can't do anything without our faith. Well, he created the world without our faith, didn't he? <laughs> right? And we weren't there in the beginning when he said, let, let you know, when he, when he said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. None of us was there, so he didn't need us to do miracles. And God doesn't need anybody to perform a miracle. He can perform a miracle if he wants to. Man, he created us without our permission, right? He created all the animals, the trees, the seas, the, all the, the ocean, the sea, the rivers, the plants, you name it. He created it all without permission or faith from anything. God is omnipotent. He's all-powerful. He can do whatever he wants. But when it comes to Christianity and it comes for, to us, Receiving something from God, God works with us as a team. His power and our faith is what produces the miracle. And that's what we see in these two verses. Jesus, the Bible said, he spit on the ground and he made a spittle with the clay. Do you like how God does things? You want me to heal you? I'm going to spit in your face. Huh? <laughs> he spit on the ground, he made some clay. I don't know how, he, how much spit he spit in there. Evidently, he probably hacked up a good one, right? To make, to make enough to put in his eyes. And so he did that, and he put it in the man's eyes, and he told the man, now you have to do something. Right? He said, I've already done my part. I made the clay. I put it in your eyes. Now you have to do something. You go to the pool. Faith in action. 
and showing us tonight uh, in dealing with us, he limits himself to work with us so that, uh, you know, our, like I said, God's power and our faith and obedience can bring about the miracle. The man went. He did what Jesus told him to do. He could have complained, Lord, can't you not see I'm blind? But he didn't because he got everywhere else before being blind, right? And so he didn't use that as an excuse because if he wanted to go places, he went. Evidently, he went somewhere to where Jesus could meet him, even though he was blind. And so when Jesus told him to go to the pool of Siloam, he went. He obeyed the Lord. He went. He believed God. He went. Jesus did his part. He put the clay in his eyes. He touched him, sent him. He went. He washed, and he came back seeing. You see how faith and obedience works? He said, Preacher, I want a miracle in my life. I want God to work something out. Well, we have to be willing to obey the Lord, do what God tells us to do. And we also have to be, have the faith in God, that God will do it. Nobody can do it for you, right? Nobody can have faith for you. I can teach you about faith. You can read all the books about faith in the world that you want to read, but you have to have it. You have to say, God, I believe. I believe you. I believe you. And that's what faith really is. It's very simple. Don't complicate faith. Faith is simply, Lord, I'm asking you to do this for me, and I'm believing you. And when the devil comes and said, God didn't hear you, I'm going to tell him to shut up and leave me alone. Get thee behind me, Satan, right? Or when he says, oh, God's not going to answer that, or that's not going to work out, I'm going to say, no, God will work it out. So faith is not very complicated. It's just sim you just simply being hard-headed and saying God will do it, right? That's what really faith is. Faith is really being hard-headed that God will do it. So when every, everything else comes against you, I don't care what this one has to say. I don't care what that has to say. If I'm really believing God, God, you know, I'm putting my faith in God. Faith is simply, you know, God will do it. That's what faith is. Nothing more, nothing great, nothing fancy, no charismatic thing, really. It's simply you just saying, I believe God. I believe God, right? I believe God. And so in verse 8 through 12, we'll finish off with this tonight, the first 12 verses. I know we probably won't get to everything. But um, in verses 8 through 12, it says, The neighbors therefore, and they which before had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and received my sight. They said, then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. And so, in this last one, God, like I said, God, when he allowed things to happen in our life, I'm talking about God can use your story, he will use your situation for his glory, if you let him. If you let him, he will use your situation for his glory, if you let him. And that's what this man happened. His eyes were opened, and the people knew him. Maybe they walked by him and, 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 and didn't give him a dime because he was there begging. Or maybe they did help him out when he was blind. And now they're seeing this man, and, and, and he's seeing, and they said, oh, he looks like him. He's like him, or he is him. And he said, hey, I am this man. I am that man. I am that man that was blind. Now I see. And so when they ask him, how did you see? <laughs> he gave them the best answer. He said, Jesus, Jesus, touch me. Jesus, touch me. That's the whole thing tonight is that people look at your life. Now we can turn it to a spiritual thing real quick here. And people look at your life. You come to Jesus and you, you receive him into your life. You believe that he died on the cross and rose again from the dead to save you. And you allow him to come into your life. And he opened your eyes, your spiritual eyes. And you begin to see and your life is changing and God is blessing you. And somebody come by and say, hey, what happened to you? You're not the way you used to be. They did it to me when I was in the military. What's wrong with you? You're not acting like the way you used to when you first got here. <laughs> I'm a Christian. 
I got to Jesus. He opened my eyes. I became a testimony. God was using my story for his glory. And everybody there, they knew, oh, man, him and this guy, this other guy, his name was Armando. I don't know, maybe he's listening, I don't know, <laughs> he listens every once in a while, but we changed, God changed us, God filled us with the Holy Ghost, we completely changed, we were transformed, and so with all the guys in our unit and stuff, he said, what's wrong with you guys, you're not the way you used to be, you don't do the things that you used to do any longer, what happened, a man named Jesus touched me, a man named Jesus touched me, and he, he changed my life, and then, they didn't ask that, but these people said, where is Jesus? Maybe they wanted Jesus to touch them also. And you see how God was using this man for his glory? He didn't understand why he was born blind, why he was in that situation. But once God changed him, and once God healed him, his life became a light. His story began to give glory to God. How, who knows how many people were influenced and touched by this situation right then around that area. And even unto this very day, thousands of years later, how many people have heard messages preach about this man? And they took courage and said, well, if God can do it for him, God can do it for me also. Amen? And so the Bible study is tonight is you may not always understand the road that God leads you down. As David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he said, thou art with me. Well, right before that, he said, you'll lead me in the paths of righteousness, and he will lead me beside still waters and green pastures. And so we want to understand all the things and all the ways that God will lead us, sometimes in the way of peace, sometimes in the way of plenty and blessings, sometimes in the way of good things, and sometimes through the valley of the shadow of death. But you can rest assured through it all, God will use it for his glory if you let him. Let him use your story. And so with that, we'll conclude the Bible study tonight. And the, the title is, God Can Use Your Story Also. You may not understand it all. But if you give God a chance to work in your life, he can use you for his glory. Father, thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for every word in the gospel and the message here that we're sharing. I pray, God, that you will use it for your glory tonight. Touch hearts, touch lives. Let us all understand that you have a plan and a purpose for our life. And tonight, Lord Jesus, I pray for everyone here and those that join us in line that you'll keep your hand upon us. And strengthen us and draw us closer to you. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.